Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. This is Chimera Elite, and today we're taking a look at a quick, very quick, Wolf v. Wolf game. It is me, the Elite, versus the Lone Wolves. And this was a funny little game as it reminded me of not even trying to insult the other guy, but old, failed strategies that I've tried in the past that I've posted videos of in the past and seeing that they just simply didn't work out uh, in the past I had a somewhat uh, disastrous tendency to split up my army and against armies like the the ram or the lion you might get lucky and be able to pull off something uh, that would win you the game but them being able to bring the preponderance of their army just slammed up against what units you had on that side of the battlefield would kind of just make your attempts just futile and as a result I currently uh, use the very simple uh, strategy of all of my units here to this one spot or around this one spot and if they have some sort of line you know some sort of front line the objective is to punch a hole through that line and disrupt whatever strategy they were trying to do this also makes it somewhat hard for them to deal with my own front line, which is Guardians of Equilibrium and everyone else. Because they're constantly on, they, they pretty much have to be constantly on the defensive. And it also, helped, it also helps a lot that I only have one uh, support guy. Sure, my Guardians of Equilibrium aren't full frontliners, but they're good enough to tow that line between being a support and a frontliner for the damage that they can pour out with their abilities and just his melee in general just adds up to so much damage that they just they're one of the few uni few units that can tow that line and do and are good at it but as you can see right here, this guy is sending up two Fang Warriors. I believe they're just the base Fang Warriors. Two Fang Warriors and a Wolf and Lone Wolf. Now, good, very good choice in fact actually. Uh, very good choice to pick the, the Wolf and Lone Wolf because it's a fan he's a fantastic healer. This early use of offensive stance was not a good idea. It was in fact a terrible idea. And I have one very simple reason. You use offensive offensive stance to set up follow-ups. You use it to set something up for yourself. He has no range here. If he had his crossbowman over there, his assault crossbowman, Okay, that might make a bit more sense, even though he'd probably still have to burn his other offensive stance to kill that one unit. Again, not really worth it. You use offensive stance to secure kills, or in my case with Rysgar and his damage dealing potential, you more use it to set kills up for Rysgar so he can just tear through the enemy army. He uses his offensive stance far too early, and while the healer, the wolf and lone wolf, does give you the ability to be extremely reckless in your actions, setting your guy up in a situation like this, where he's pretty much surrounded by three other quite tanky, quite dangerous enemy units, is not something that you want to be in. It's not a situation you want to put your units in. And this guy, 
he has one thing that I've learned in I don't know how many however many hundreds I think I've played like almost 200 games at this point which is still even not that much considering what I've seen on the leaderboards Astro Worm I'm looking at you yes I've seen how many games you play um and even I like even I know that you want your hero to be a decisive factor that's why your hero is there your hero is extremely powerful and your hero should be your front line obviously there are some heroes that aren't your front liners just Cillian or Emerok Emerok less than Cillian obviously because he's tanky for the most part but they are there to give you that tactical edge or that damaging edge that other units simply don't have the damage health or just ability to that's why they're heroes they turn the tide of battle and as you'll see in a few moments as I zoom in on this kind of clusterfuck that's happening here Vryscar very rapidly makes the difference between me or rather <laughs> between uh, how fast this guy loses the game because sure I would have lost a guy a guardian of equilibrium if this guy's attacks had gone through he would have probably also damaged another one but as you will soon see Ricecar is a very very angry bastard and he two shots that guy. I didn't even need War Fury, but I use it because I wanted to be sure that that guy died. And it's at this point that I start to feel a little bit sorry for this guy because he has gone from going into this battle at a 6v5, looking decently promising and turning that into a 4v5 in my favor not his in my favor and it's at this point that he kinda looks at it and sees that he just lost two of his frontliners I don't care if you're a lion it's a blow to your army, it's not huge just because of how many units you can bring to the table. If you're a ram, it's even less devastating. If you are Wolfen, losing even one unit is absolutely devastating to you. Because every unit has a purpose. Every unit has something to bring to the table that some other unit cannot. That's why I have a Grave Guardian rather than a third Guardian of Equilibrium because he's tankier, he has a better parry, he is better suited as the main frontliners. The other Guardians of Equilibrium are essentially just backup frontliners. They can do either job. That's why I like them so much, and that's why I think they need a nerf, because they're not expensive enough considering the multitude of jobs that they can do. This guy had a good army composition, but he still needs to learn the lesson, and I hope that I helped teach him it, that it's not good to split up your army. In actuality, it's n almost never good to split up your army. And I hope you learned this lesson. I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and I will see you guys in the next one. Peace.